been a friend I can count on. He was a friend on Calvary. No greater love has one shown another. Even back then, Jesus had been a great friend. seeks comfort in all of the things that soon pass away but I have found a heavenly treasure there'll be a friend standing with me on that homecoming day he's always been friend I can count on. He was a friend on Calvary. No greater love has one shown another. Even back then, Jesus had been a great friend. On this journey Through good times and bad Our burdens we share Who brought me salvation Oh what other friend Can walk with me here Than carry me there He's always been a friend I can count on He was a friend on Calvary Love has one shown another Even back then Even back then Jesus had been a great friend to me. Amen, amen. Even back then when I was a sinner, Jesus was being a friend to me. Amen, this is your truly, your Bishop Evangelist Willie Grizzle from the House of Prayer Radio Ministry, coming live from Scotchville. <coughs> <coughs> amen. Hey man, I just want to get on here today about common meet and greet. Hey man, praise God, you know, uh, it won't be long, we'll be going down there to Illinois, praise God. Lady Cheney, we're going to be rocking and rolling uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to leave here, we're going to try to leave here by 3.30 tomorrow, praise God. We might do a service right before we leave, praise God. But, you know, uh, we're just going to obey God. Amen. We're going to go down there. This is about Jesus. And uh, we're just going to love on the uh, Apostle uh, Dallas Miller. Praise God. And uh, we're just going to see what turn, what God has for us. Praise God. Because uh, without God, we ain't nothing. Amen. Praise God. And today, we're going to be talking about common meet and greet. Amen. You know, a lot of people meet each other on the street every day. Amen. They meet... Um, Saying how they wet thing their hands up, you know. No matter if we got issues, Amen. Praise God. If we, if there's a spiritual battle, Amen. Spiritual battle we all have common in, Amen. Praise God. Now a lot of people don't understand what spiritual battle is. Spiritual battle is when somebody preaches and says something that steps on your toes, Amen. Praise God that steps on your toes and uh, you get upset. And you don't want to have nothing to do with them. Praise God. Hello, Sister Lord. God bless you, girl. How are you doing down there? In, uh, up there. Oh, no, it's down there, ain't it? Yes, down there in Tennessee. Back. Amen. Praise God. I hope that you're being blessed. And if you ain't, well, you need to pray about it. Amen. Praise God. You know, it's been a beautiful day today. And, you know, me and my wife, we're getting things prepared uh, for departure tomorrow. Praise God. You know, my wife's got to take care of the girl. Praise God. And, uh. She says she's not going on this trip, praise God. 
Praise God, she's just too far and ain't enough gas stations for uh, um, the, what do, you, what do you call it? Uh, how did you put it? Yeah, I ain't got no, I ain't got no commode in the back of the truck, so I ain't going. Amen, praise God. No, but I can always put a party chair back there and hide. Because yeah, yeah, the but bed cover covers everything. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. You know, uh, praise God. We're uh, we're just excited. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, brother um, uh, Apostle uh, Dallas Miller. He asked me to come down there, and he invited Bishop Eddie Cheney. And I said, Well, I'll ask him. All, all I can do is throw the rope out there. If he grabs it, well, we're going. Amen. Praise God. So uh, unless things have changed, unless things have changed, uh, uh, Bishop Eddie's going to be down here with me, uh, probably about three, uh, two thirty, three o'clock, and we're going to do all our uh, uh, safety checks. Amen. Praise God. Before we leave, praise God. Check all the transmission. Uh, make sure nobody's killing nobody and all that good stuff. And praise God. And uh, we're just going to go down there, and we're just going to love up on old uh, Apostle. Amen. Praise God. And him and his, his beautiful wife. Praise God. And whoever else is down there, praise God, you don't never know. We might have a revival sidewalk. Amen. We might get out there and just get all the drunk saved. Who knows? Praise God. But we're going to go down there, and we're going to obey God. Praise God. And uh, if uh, anybody in the chat room here, if you, uh, if you would like to go and uh, do something for the Lord, hey, how about you pray for us? And if you want to go, hop in. We'll take you down there. We'll kidnap you, Lord. How about you? I know you can talk somebody down there. Come on now. Praise God. Anyways, anybody's invited to come. I, um, I think we can get what? Uh, you can get six in there. You can get six people in there. Praise God. And uh, very, very skinny. You can get oh, another yeah. one. Uh, we got a big bed truck, too. We can lay down and take a nap if you want to. It might get a little uh, bumpy, but hey, praise God. It's a five-hour trip. Surely you can take a nap. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I know uh, I'm going to be driving, so uh, I know Eddie's going to be yawning on me all the way down there. So be praying for him that he stays awake because uh, I hate to have to rub up against the rail there just to see if he's awake. Amen. Praise God. Anyways, anyway, anyways we're talking about common meet and greet. Amen. How many times in a day do you meet somebody with Christ? Amen. Praise God. Not not. Brother Willie, not Sister Angie, not even Sister Laura, but I mean with Christ. Amen. Just say, hey, how you doing? Uh, anything I can help you with? Uh, you want to pray? Praise God. And Sister Laura says, five hours with you and Bishop? Nah, I think I'll pass. But I will pray. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I think you and Angie's on the same wavelength. I ain't going to ride with a bunch of men and up there just chitter-chattering all day long. No, I'm good. I'll pass. Amen. Praise God. But, you know, God is good. Amen. And, uh, you know, Eddie, he'll keep me awake. He'll, he, he's, a, he's a gift of gab. Amen. Praise God. And, you know, especially when we get tired and uh, 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 we start get we get a little crazy-headed. Amen. We start just... Thinking we're being chased by aliens or something. Praise God. I think Ali I think uh, uh, ET's got Eddie's number. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, amen. You know, praise God because uh, he's always talking to us. Well, he's looking for them lights in the sky. And, and yeah, never. Yeah, uh, brother Eddie, if you're listening in, if you get, I love you, brother, but I'm gone. You ain't. Nah, I ain't gonna be pro. No, it ain't happening. I'll fight off ET. Amen. Praise God. Anyway, today we're talking about common meet and greet. Praise God. How many times in a day that you meet your neighbor or meet your family and, and just love on them? No matter how they talk about you, how they despise you, how they do all these things, how many you just go to them with a smile on your face? Amen. Praise God. Because I know, I don't know about you, but I don't, Sister Ann, I don't know about you, but I really don't want to talk to somebody that's growling at me. Huh? Huh? You distracted over or something? Uh, no, I just found out why there's no school tomorrow. Oh, why ain't there no school? There will be no school in Allen County tomorrow because our teachers will be traveling to Frankfurt to attend a rally. Oh, uh, woo -hoo. Yeah, they're going to talk about the paychecks. Anyway, that's them. Let them move on. Praise God. Praise God. She said, uh, Sister Laura, me, me neither. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> You know, I got me a brand new pair of shoes, too. So, Eddie, uh, uh, 
I got I got long legs and got good shoes, so uh, I think I can outrun you. You might be short, but I'm long legged. Amen. Praise God. But anyways, you know today is a meet and greet. You know when you when you go meet somebody, they look like they're gonna bite you, bite you. You really don't want to talk to them. Praise God. But you know, if Christ is in you, you got to, huh? Yeah. If Christ is in you, Bible says you got to love thy neighbor as you do yourself. Praise God. And if you love God, you're going to have to shine that light no matter how much they shake your fist at you or how much they want to take a nip at your ear. Praise God. I don't know if it's cutting in and out, but praise God, we're going to continue on anyway. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to open your Bibles. Praise God. Let's go over here. And I think your date is what's messing me up. It's hitting my Wi-Fi. Anyways, praise God. Here we go. I want you to look over here in Hebrew. Hebrew 10, uh, 24 and 25. I want you to take a good look old gander at it. Praise God. I want you to uh, apply it to your heart. See, a lot of people read these, but they don't never apply it. See, that applying means the Word of God is absorbed into your heart. Now look over here in Hebrews chapter 10, praise God, in the 24th verse, and let us consider one another to provoke. Provoke. Now, Angie, I'm not very educated, but provoke, what does that mean to you? Instigate, no attack. Uh, no. Provoke is... Make you think. Huh? Hmm? Provoke means an action. Jump. Let's see. See, if somebody... Okay, let's use this example. If you see a kid that's playing with a ball, okay, he's bouncing the ball, and he it rolls out in the street, and here comes a car, what do you see? What do you do when you see that? You react. You react. You provoke to get that child out of there. No. Provoked mm -hmm. is like you attack or you instigate. Well, and you okay, you can instigate, yeah. Well, but let's look, let's read it in this contents. It says right here, let us consider one another to provoke onto love. Now, attack is not love. It says provoke onto love and to good works. All right, praise God. Now, looking at the twenty fifth verse here. Not forsaken to assemble ourselves together as the manner of some is, but to exalting one another. Lifting one another up. Praise God. And then it says, so much that more as you see the day approach. Praise God. See, the day approach. See, God's coming back, and He's coming back in His glory. And He wants to know if you're fighting among each other or if you're loving one another. He wants to know what you're common meet and greet is. What what makes you stand up and proclaim the word of God? Or what does it mean when you just sit there and grumble? Praise God. See, that's what's wrong with the church today. Praise God. They want to sit back and grumble. They want to sit back and fight and monger and buzz like a bulldog. Amen. Oh, I don't want to hear that preacher. I don't want to hear that singer. I don't want to hear that evangelist. I don't want to. No, I got my comfort zone. I got my preacher in my pocket. I pay him to do what I tell him to do, and he does it. See, my friend, you can't buy me and you can't fire me. Praise God. When I put my, when I put my key in my truck, I go. I don't care who don't want me to go. Praise God. See, that's what we both be, lifting one another up. And our, our Lord Jesus Christ lifts us up that we can draw all men nigh. Praise God. All men nigh is why we got to get to. Praise God. That's where we got to come to the Word of God. I want you to check over here in Matthew 18. Praise God. Matthew 18. Amen. I want, and we're going to start in the 17th verse. Matthew 18 starting at the 17th verse. If he neglect to hear them, tell, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let, let him be unto the heathen man and publican. All right? Very I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind up on earth shall be bounden in heaven. And who's, whatsoever you shall loosen up on earth, you shall loosen in heaven. And again I say unto you, 
You notice there's something uh, uh, routine Jesus is saying here? The Word of God is talking to you. Now listen to what it's saying here. He says, I say unto you that that if there are two of you shall agree on any, on earth and touching. Now that, that means you got to be physical, don't it? you got to be physical. Praise God. you got to be physical. Now look, now look what it says. It says, touching anything that shall, shall ask, it shall be done from them of my Father which is in heaven. For whether two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. Praise God. Now let's look at that 21st verse here. He says, Then came Peter unto him, said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And he said, and, and, and sin against me and forgive him until seven times. And Jesus said unto him. Now, this is a lot of people don't get this. They don't they don't understand that we got to be in that forgiving spirit each and every day of our life. Doesn't matter how bad a day you had. It doesn't matter how many people's made you mad. It doesn't matter how many people have talked about you, walked about you, or lied on you. See now look, I want you to listen to what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee. But seven times, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Well, I'm not the smartest cook in the world, but let me tell you this. What is seven times 70? That's 490 times a day. Praise God. Uh-huh. I mean, no matter if your husband gets mad at you because you burnt his food, okay? You both are forgiven. If your husband uh, makes fun of you, you both are forgiven. See, we got to have that forgiving spirit. Because if we can't forgive the ones that come against us, how's our Lord going to forgive us? See, my friend, that's what we got to understand today. The meet and greet in everyday life. That we meet somebody on the street just like today. I was down here at the O'Reilly's. Amen. And I was getting me a, a lock cap for my truck. And guess who I stepped out and seen? I seen old uh, brother uh, Keith, uh, Kenneth Bachman. And uh, he was sitting there in the car. And I said, hey, bro, what's up? How you doing? Oh, we talked. And he was, uh, we were talking about the gas caps. And we was talking. I asked him how he was doing. And it, see, it's just a common meet and greet. It, it, you don't have to be in a church just to meet and greet. Praise God, I meet and greet in people's houses. I, I'll drive... Uh, five hours just to hug a brother to say, hey, I love you. I'm here to support you spiritually. I'm here to help you at this moment, at this time. See, that's what's wrong with the world today. They won't make the effort to wrap their arms around you. They won't make the effort to touch somebody's heart, especially when they're broken and they're recovering over sin. Yeah, we do, Don't we recover over sin? You know, sin comes into our life and we got two choices. We can dust it out or we can accept it. See, I don't want to accept sin. Sin is not in my category. I don't want no dirt in my house because God wants us to be cleansed. He wants us to be empowered with His grace and mercy. Now, I want you to read on here. And it says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which had took account of his servants. See, God takes account of us. If we do bad or good, he, He's got to answer for us. Amen. See, Jesus is big bubba. Amen. And he talks to daddy. And daddy sees fit that we need a whooping. We're going to get a whooping. Praise God. See, that's what it comes all down to, my friend. It all comes down to, do you love him or do you just like him? My friend, I love Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. Yeah, I've got my whippings. I've got my uh, tail kicking. I don't know about you, Sister Laura, but I think we all need to sometimes you just need to be took behind the bar. Amen. Sometimes we just got to get a reality check. Praise God that we got to come to the center of God's will. You know, praise God, like this song here, that's when it's time to pray. Praise God. When you got all doubt in your life, my friend, and you ain't don't know what you're going to do, it's time to meet and greet with Jesus. Amen. So enjoy this song and we'll be back. Much 
noise all around me. I see things I don't want to see. I hear things I don't want to hear. And it's very clear that I need you near. This world, all of its violence, doesn't need a moment of silence. Need a more old-fashioned way. And people who aren't afraid to pray. Fall down, look up, take it to the Lord, never give up. Always something more we do whenever heaven hears us pray. He hears our heart, always there to listen, tears will start. A holy conversation, even when we don't know what to say. That's when it's time to pray. Sometimes we get in a hurry, sometimes we begin to worry. Sometimes we forget to give him all the things we have that we don't need to have. His way is always more efficient, His grace always sufficient. His mercy reaches me in ways that I can't even see. Fall down, look up, take it to the Lord, never give up. Always something more we do whenever heaven hears us pray. He hears us pray. He hears our heart, always ever listen, tears will start. A holy conversation, even when we don't know what to say, that's when it's time to pray. Yeah, that's when it's time to pray. So fall down, look up, take it to the Lord, never give up. Always something more we do whenever heaven hears us pray. He hears us pray. He hears our heart. Always there to listen, tears will start A holy conversation Even when we don't know what to say That's day. when it's time to pray Yeah, that's when it's time to pray When that mountain's in your way That's when it's time to pray When the sunny skies turn gray That's when it's time to pray Yeah, that's when it's time That's the time that you pray. When you know when everything is your back's against the wall and boy I can't take no more. Oh, I just want to go run and hide under a rock and I don't want nobody to pray for me. I don't want nobody to talk to me. See, that's my friend, that's when we forbearing one another. Praise God. In, in your worstest time, God is the greatest. Do you understand what I'm saying? In your worstest time, God is the greatest. See, when you are down to your last straw, you're crawling across the floor of your bottom lip, you got any lower, you'd step on it. Praise God, that's when God shines within you. Praise God, if you got Jesus Christ, you got it all. Praise God. Now look over here in Colossians, uh, Colossians 3, starting at the 13th verse. He says, Forbear one another and forgive one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, if any of Christ forgive you, also do ye. Huh. That's a mouthful. Well, that guy stepped on my toe. He stole my gas out of my car. He's done this. He broke my windows. Forgive him. Because these minor things of life can be fixed. What God wants to do is spiritually fix them. To cause them from not stealing gas. Not breaking windows. Not lying to people. Not... Uh, misbehaving towards one another. Praise God. See, that's what... Now, that, just imagine this, Sister Lord, if you're still on earth, think about that for a second. What if God, Jesus Christ, looked up upon the, down upon the clouds and he's seen each other fighting? You know what he would probably say is, is them children need to be whipped. They need to be disciplined. Now, that's what the Word of God's for. It's not to, to beat each other to death with it. It is to correct them when they've done an error. Now, a lot of people miss this. They think, well, I got to do it this way. I got to do it like my grandpa or my mama or my daddy's done it. No, you do it the way God have it set out. Praise God. Now, look over here and the rest of that verse. It says, even as Christ forgave you, you also do. And above all, 
above all. Let's underline that. Above all these things, put on charity. What is charity, Sister Angie? Love. Love. What is love? God. Praise God. Put on God. When you're out here and you see people that are crying, people that are torn down, that people that just wants to fight and argue and debate, why don't you put on your Jesus jacket, amen? Why don't you put on a smile where the whole world can see? Light your candle, praise God. Light your candle where the people in your own house that's living in darkness can see the light. You hear what I'm saying? Praise God, because there's a high, not higher power at hand, and His name is Jesus. And He wants to free you from your bonds. Come on now. Which is bonded is perfection. And the 15 verses are let that peace of God rule. Rule. What means rule? That means it's a commandment, a rule in your heart. The love should be beaten like a, 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 a LCD light. I mean, so bright that darkness can't get in. It's got to rule in your heart that you got to have compassion towards one another. you got to have love towards one another, even when they're spiritually damaged. You know, there, there is a such thing that you can be spiritually damaged, that you can get yourself in some other doctrine than Jesus Christ. And people live their life in this spiritual darkness. And they think, well, this, I ain't never heard none of this from my church. Well, the problem is, your church is not reading from the Word of God. They have not accepted the truth. And the truth will set you free. Absolutely. Praise God. Now, look over here. Oh, to, you're picking and choosing what they want. Yeah, yeah. Nitpicking. Handpicking is what I call it. I'll tell you this, and you'll have to figure out the rest. Yeah. No. Get the whole picture. Praise God. Get the whole picture. All right. And it says here, to which we also call in one body and be thankful. Praise God. Doesn't matter if you're short, big, fat, tall. Doesn't matter. We're all called into one body, and that's the body of Christ. And it says, be ye thankful that you've been freed from this devil's way. You've been born again. You've been saved by the grace of God. Praise God. And in the 16th verse, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Huh? Oh, did it, now did it say wallet there? No, I didn't say wallet. It's let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and sing with their grace the in your hearts to the Lord. Not to everybody else, but to the Lord. Have a new song. <laughs> Shout it out from a rooftop. Say, hey, I'm in love with Jesus. Come and boogie with me. Let's get it on like Donkey Kong with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Bless oh, you. Praise God. You, go. you know, keep my wife in it's allergy season. It tears her up. Praise God. So keep her in prayer. Oh, Praise God. God. 17 verse whatsoever you do in word or deed, not just when you talk, but the things you do in your life, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Give thanks to God and the Father by Him. <laughs> Wives, I know this right here, this next verse is getting a lot of people in trouble. And uh, you used to get me in trouble with Angie, uh -oh. but she come to the truth, didn't you? Praise God. I want to read this. It says this. Wives, submit yourself unto your husbands and as it is fit on, into the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. See, People don't want to submit, especially if they're married. Oh, I don't want to agree to that. No, no, no. No, I don't like that. That don't feel good. To me? Mm-hmm. Okay, your wife should submit to you. Mm hmm But that doesn't give you the right to treat her like a doormat. Right. right. No, she's not your slave. She's your helper. See, there's a difference between that's, being a slave and being a helper. That's where a lot of men do get in trouble. Yep, yep. Is yeah, when their wives do submit to them, then they want to treat them like a slave. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now you go get me a cup of coffee, and I mean now. Or uh, uh, fix my supper at a certain time. Or you going to do this. You're gonna, now, wait a minute. There's a difference between helper and a slave. A helper, they work together. A slave is a, somebody that's bossing over another. See, a lot of people, a lot of churches get, don't get this right. They think, well... 
that she's my wife, I own her because it's a little piece of paper. When she said, I do, she do, I do the rest of my life. No. God created a wife to each man for a helper. In spirit, and physical, and heart. Now, if you're a babe in Christ, you won't understand that. But more you grow, you'll understand that God gave Adam a spiritual helper. He gave him Eve. Now, she messed up. She got tied up in the devil's ways. But let me ask you this, Sister Angie. You think Adam hated her? No. He still loved her, didn't he? All of her faults, all of her uh, mess-ups, he still loved her. Well, yes, because he messed up, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but you got to remember, Adam, he played the blame game, didn't he? God come up, oh, Adam, you have messed up. Well, I, that my wife begot me. Mm, wait a minute. Somebody force you? Mm, come on. Praise God. You know, a lot of people say, well, my husband talked me into it. Really? So you ain't got to bring it in your head? I mean, come home, man, people. Let's get real. If God give you common sense, we both to use that common sense. That's about what today is about. A common meet and greet. Now, if you live your life and in somebody else's footsteps, you're not living life. See, God has put you on this earth for a reason. And the reason might be to teach children or cook for the homeless or the needy or just wrap your arms around a... a Somebody's been sexually abused. I mean, we all got a pass. Because we didn't just pop up out of the ground and say, Hey, here we are. God created us from the womb. Praise God. See, we got to understand that each and every day, we all got a past, but we all got a future if we accept it. See, a future is what God is in. God don't daddle in the past. He don't pull up the things that he cost in the lake. See, Jesus don't go back. He don't go fishing for trouble. <laughs> you know, he, see, he seeks for the ones that love him, that wants to be cleansed, that wants to recover from their sin. See, you know, you know, like Apostle uh, uh, Miller, he's he's in uh, he's got a ministry called the uh, uh, Recovering Ministry. Praise God, it's an awesome mystery, and I, that's why I, I want him so excited to go down there and check this out and see exactly how he deals with it. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that will just send them over to the drug addict place, and they'll give them a little pills and zone them out, and they'll get right with God then. No, 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 no. See, to get something spiritually changed in somebody, you got to get in the physical to get to the spirit. See, because you could tell people all across these radio waves, oh, this is what you need to do for Jesus. This is how this and this and this and this. But my friend, I'd rather look you right dead in the eye and tell you the truth. Then you hear one of these little CDs that I sent out and say, well, that preacher said on that CD. No, I want you to look me right dead in the eye when I tell you. See, that's why I tell everybody, don't just listen to everything. Because the devil's in everything, too. He's the devil's in the details. See, where's God? That's why I go walk with them. They can tell me they're apostle. They can tell me they're a bishop. They can tell me they're evangelist. They can tell me they're the best thing since sliced bread. But I'm not going to cast my pearls before the swine till I walk with them. Talk to them. Sit at their table and eat biscuit with them. See, people, it's kind of hard to lie to somebody when you look them in the eye. Get up in their face. Get up in their business. Praise God. See, that's what's wrong with people today. They don't, they're they afraid that they're going to be intrusive. Well, I'd rather be intrusive than you win a soul to Christ. Think about this. I'd rather be intrusive and win a soul to Christ and then lie to you and we both go to hell. And that's the truth. Praise God. See, a lot of people today have not doing this truth. Because the truth is not in them. The truth is far from them. And the reason why they won't do the truth because it might hurt them. Because they might have to give up something. They might have to say, well, I can't go that far. Because 
of this, that, and the other. And see, I, I see this all the time, people making excuses. You know what excuses are good for? Huh, Andy? You know what excuses are good for? Like toilet paper. Wiping your butt and cut, tossing them to the side. That's what excuses are for. Praise God. See, but God's telling us, don't make excuses. Don't don't put on a show and act and say, well, let people like me. My friend, be honest with people. Walk with them. Uh, have a biscuit. Sit down and talk with them. My friend, you can hear somebody preaching on this Facebook or a speaker here all day long. Do you walk with them? You don't know them. And that's why. I'm headed to Illinois tomorrow at 3.30. Sure, you don't want to go tomorrow? I'll tell you, we'll go down there. We'll, we'll tear that town apart. And if you don't, well, oh, that's fine too. Pray for us. Amen. Praise God, because we're going to have to have some prayer. Because my understanding, we're going right into the drug central. Amen. Uh, it's a it's a dope, dope heaven. <laughs> but you know, uh, I'm we're going to go in. We're just going to spread the word of God. Amen. Praise God. We're just going to live like we're dying, because we are. We are dying each and every day. Praise God. So, my friends and family, I want you to grab this song here. Praise God. Uh, the, the higher power. You know, I hope that Jesus Christ is your higher power. I hope you ain't caught up in drugs. I hope you ain't caught up in fornication. I hope that you're seeking that higher power. Because he is the truth, life, and the way, my friend. And he wants to deliver you whatever trouble you have today. It could be sin. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be hatred. It could be anything. God said, come on to me. What? Who are all heavy laden. And I will give you rest. My friend, don't you need some rest today? Amen. I sure do. Because God is good all the time. help you through. There's a higher power, they're helpless pilgrims just like you. There's a higher power, so sing and shout, walk and talk. There's a higher power, lay down your soul that Jesus bought. There's a higher power, amen, amen, amen. amen. There's a higher power, amen, amen, amen. amen. There's a higher power. And talk. There's a higher power. Let down your soul that Jesus bought. There's a higher power. Amen. 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 There's a higher power. Mark this down. There's a higher power. They can't give you no heavenly crown. There's a higher power. So sing and shout, walk and talk. There's a higher power. Lay down your soul that Jesus bought. There's a higher power. Amen. Amen. There's a higher power. power praise God and his name is Jesus and he wants to give it to you but my friend you got to put on them shoes you got to walk you got to talk and you got to be with Jesus praise God see that's what it is each and every day that sometimes them shoes feel a little tight don't they and well I don't feel like doing this I don't feel like doing that well my friend you better get your feelings out of the way and get the grace of God upon you praise God I want you to open over here to 1 Corinthians 14 Starting at the 23rd verse, it says, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and speak all with tongue, they come 
on into those that are unlearned. Amen. Whoa. Wait a minute. Go into unlearned territory? Huh? How? Why would I do that? Because people need to know Jesus. Praise God. And they need to know what true love is. And it says here, He is convicted of all, and His judgment is of all. And thou, uh, the secrets of His heart, are made manifest. Uh-oh, the tattletale. Oh, Lord, the Lord's dealing with me, and now I'm going to talk about it. Uh-oh. Um, now, what does that mean? If you get it out there, the devil can't use it. Come on. That's what I like about Sister Laura so much. She just lets her rip like a tater chip. She don't care who says what. But you know one thing she does? She's using it with the grace of God because God had convicted her heart. To get it on out there where the devil can't use it because you keep it up, he'll tear you down with it. Praise God. See, that's the truth. Just like my wife here. Praise God. The, the, There's many years ago that she had let, let the devil keep her mouth shut. And I said, honey, the more you be quiet, sooner or later God's going to take your tongue away from you. And, I, you know, I, I stayed on her. I prayed and I, I preached on her. And, I, and all of a sudden, she started coming in here to the House of Prayer Radio Ministry. She says, well, I, I'm going to have to come in here. You won't shut up till I do. Praise God. But, you know, I love it each and every moment. Praise God. Because, you know, with a, to have a good husband, you got to have a good wife. Praise God. To be a good husband, you got to have a good wife. And if you ain't got a wife backing you up, doing... Whatever choices you have to make, if they ain't if they ain't there helping you in some fashion or form, there's something wrong there. Strangers living in the same bed. You hear what I'm saying? Praise God. That's why we got to come together, one mind, one accord. Praise God. Now look over here in the 25th verse, and through the secrets of his heart is manifest, and fall down onto his face. He will. Whoop. He what? He will worship God. When the conviction power falls upon you, praise God, when the conviction power falls upon you, my friend, there ain't nothing common about that. <laughs> Come on. When the conviction power, you will worship God. Because you, you you can't stand it. You can't, you can't be caught up in the things of this world. Because you know, without a doubt, God is dealing with you. That your heart needs to be satisfied with Him. Praise God. And report that God is in your, in you of the truth. Ah, oh, the truth. Who's the truth? That's Jesus that died, rose on the third day, and resurrected for your soul. Amen. Praise God. Look over here to 26 verse. How is it, and then, brother, when you come together and every one of the, you have psalms and has a doctrine, and has a tongue, and has revelation, and has interpreted, let all things be done to what? Edify. What is edifying? Edifying the Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, letting the world know that, hey, God is not dead. He is very much alive, my friend. He wants you to speak about it. He wants you to live it. Amen. He wants you to put on that God coat. Amen. That one that's made white as sparkless. Amen. That has no wrinkles, has no doubt, has no fear. See, we, we're all on borrowed time, my friends, because one day we're going to leave this earth. And we're, what condition are we going to be in? 27 verses says, If any man speak, speak in an unknown tongue, let him be by two. Hmm. In other words, if some if if there's going to be some um, um, tongue speaking, there should be somebody, a translator, praise God, a translator. And let it be of two, and in the, in the most of them, three. So in other words, there should be some kind, something backing up what they're speaking. You hear what I'm saying? Praise God. Now, don't get me wrong. I've been in churches where people speak in tongues, you couldn't understand a word they were saying. But the Spirit, the Spirit knows the Spirit. And God will be the... What well, they call it the translator. He'll translate to what they're saying. You know, I've, I I ain't got much in that gift, but I do have some. Amen. Some, but that's, that's something I'm growing in, is the understanding of uh, interpretation. Praise God. Praise God. And it says here that, um, uh, da, 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 where am I? If any man speak on the unknown tongue, let it be two, or mo uh, most by three, and that the course let it be one interpreter. But if 
there is no interpreter. Let him keep silent in church and let him speak on to himself and to God. Let him prophesy, speak two or three, and let them others judge. Hmm. He's talking about a matter, a meet and greet. Amen. God got a word for you, an apostle, a, a bishop, or an evangelist. They come on to talk to you, and they want to tell you something, what the Lord has told you. And there's two ways you can take it. You can accept it, or you can deny it. My friend, but a call, there is a cost of denying. There is a great judgment that we all going to have to face one day. Praise God. There is a great judgment that two things the Lord is going to say. Enter in or depart. See, my friend, there is men of God out there that does love you. Not for your wallet, not for your clothes, not for your car. That actually loves you like Christ loves you. So, my friends, before you put up your walls and say, well, I don't like what he's saying. I don't want to, say, I don't want to receive that. And I'm just going to do my thing. Well, be careful. It could be your last heartbeat. It could be your last breath. So, my friends and family, I'm going to have to get on off of here and get ready for that dirty word, work. Amen. Uh, got a long night ahead of me. Keep me in prayer as I keep you in prayer. And remember, God is not dead. He's very much alive, and he's roaring like a lion, my friend. Do you hear him in your jungle today? Amen. If you do, why don't you run with a lion? Amen. And I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. This is your truly evangelist, Willie. If you'd like to call us, hey, 270-681-8098. Sound off for Jesus. Let's roar like a lion with Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Remember me in prayer. And remember me tomorrow. I don't know if we'll have a service tomorrow or not. But either way, we're going to be going to Illinois. We're going to the north. Yankee country. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, keep me in prayer as this southern boy goes up there to the Yankee and say, Howdy! Amen. Praise God. Love you guys. God bless. Somehow
He's late. 